right, Caroline, what are we doing down here? So I know that you've been like a little bit mopey lately. And as your assistant, I cannot have you be mopey. It's not a part of my job description to let you be mopey. And so I've decided like, you know, it would cheer him up, like talking to another cryptid because it's maybe an old friend of his, maybe an old enemy, but like talking to someone new is always fun. So um, the guy we're talking to today, he was like, please, I want to be in a basement. I don't want to see sun ever in my life. So we're in the basement. How, how is talking to a cryptid going to help? My entire life has been devoted to hunting cryptids. I don't hunt cryptids anymore. My traps are rusting because they're not being sprung anymore. I'm down an outpost now because of Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So what am I supposed to do with life? Do I sit on the couch, stare at the ceiling? I've been enjoying that. I've noticed the cobwebs when they move in the wind a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're speaking Morse code to me. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've been looking at. And have you noticed that the water stain on the roof has gotten bigger too? Yeah, I think that's a growing problem. Not like sentient growing. Mm -hmm. But like maybe in like a month we look at it more deeply. I don't know. I don't know what to do with my time anymore. Without cryptids, my life is meaningless. Well, um, A, don't talk about my friend like that. And two, guess what? What if instead of hunting cryptids, you were, say, talking to cryptids? And what if, say, some of the cryptids you were talking to were not actually in the cryptid folder, but were in the folklore folder that you also have that I've also gotten into? Um, and by that, I mean... You know, do you remember like Crocus, little bunny man? Mm hmm So Crocus emailed me and was like, oh my gosh, I got this buddy underground. He was like, oh yeah, I've met David before. Like I didn't know he was talking to people. No one emailed me. And he, Crocus was like, oh my God, talk to Caroline. She's so cool. And this guy's been like emailing me for weeks now saying, hey, when can I come in? When can I come in? I'm burrowing closer and closer to you every day. I am in the town next to you. I'm underground. The ground here is so dry. Um, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm coming, and so I'm here to tell you that he's here today. And I'm going to assume that he's the one that's coming down in the elevator right now. Mm-hmm, yes. <laughs> oh, wait, no, there's no one in the elevator. Um... I thought... I'm assuming you brought me down here because we had a scheduled appointment. Yeah, we did. I have it right here. Boom! Hey, what's up, David? Oh, what? <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm asthmatic, so this is, <laughs> wow, what an entrance. That was, that was exciting. That had to, like, give you a little bit of, like, joie de vivre, David. Well, at least now I have something to do, and it's fixing the bunker wall. And at least now we know that the bunker underground is structurally sound. Hi. Hello. I'm Caroline. I'm the one who's been emailing you. Um, yeah. You are? Yeah. Tundra Berry Pine Bow, but the miners call me Pickaxe Bill. How's it going? Pickaxe Bill. Nice to meet you. David, have you ever met Pickaxe Bill before? Wait, you said Miner? Pickaxe Bill? Yeah, from Colorado. You know, it's familiar. Once in a past life, Caroline, I was a miner. A miner? A miner. Not a major? A miner. Okay. But I was a major miner. It was kind of my thing for a little while. Mm-hmm. And yeah, pickaxe bill. The name is, the name's familiar. I just can't can't put my finger on it. Well, like, I know from the folklore file that you're a, like a mining leprechaun of sorts. Um, you're kind of like goblin man. I think the correct term, and like if you feel safe, is Tommy Knacker, right? Tommy Knocker. Tommy Knocker. Okay, and like. So you've been in the mines. Um, David was in the mines too. We have like kind of a maybe a kindred spirit connection, but um, I like to get to know people. Like I'm just a person who feels deeply. I'm an empath. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where do you come from? What's your story? Oh, well, I mean, I kind of started just as a hole in the darkness. And then one day... Ray Light just came in when they were looking for gold. Gold. And there I was. And there you were, just living your life. Are there other Tommy Knockers like you? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, but we mostly keep to ourselves. You know, I hear them rap rapping around the tunnels, but mm -hmm. we usually just like 
sneaking around and doing our own little things. Mm -hmm. And so I guess because you're underground, you don't really have a good concept of time. It's just been forever for you. Been as around as long as I have. Well, Caroline, like I said, I was a minor, and I'm going to take this time to tell a little story. Ooh, yay. Many, many moons ago, I was looking for cryptids. You know, cut it down with a whole self-awareness thing, kind of how I am now. I need to find something to do, so I decided to... This is where I really expanded my territory, more out of just Texas and into other states, and ended up in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to some, uh, some locals that had some, a different accent than mine. I believe they said they were whales. Mm-hmm. Yes, whales. Mm-hmm. And they were corny? Mm-hmm. Or cornish, Like kind of cornish, Like almost corn? Like whale-ish. Like Welsh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And they were telling me about these... Uh, they didn't specifically say cryptids. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if the shoe fits. But there was a little miner's... That would go around knocking on the walls in the mines. And so I felt, what a perfect time to get a new hobby. This is in my younger years, so, you know, I was more open. Mm-hmm. Which I'm learning to be more open now. Again, yeah. Yeah. It's ever-growing process. Uh, and so I picked up mining. And I was doing it for two years. There's just something about the ruggedness, you know, breaking the earth that really brings you out of a slump. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then these, these Cornish and Wellish people were, they were nice. They'd feed, they'd, they'd provide us lunch. And, uh, so yeah, I was sitting there eating, eating my lunch and, you know, it really wasn't that good, but I heard a, I heard a knock on a wall and, you know, when you're underground, you hear all sorts of noises. It's nothing weird. And then immediately we hear some other friends yelling for help. So I, you know, dropped my plate and ran for help. And was that plate... Cornish game hen? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Ooh, I ate that lunch. <laughs> and what did you think of the lunch? It was great. Great. Yeah, salty. So you ate the lunch that David left behind, and also the knock that da- that saved David and the other miners? Was that you? Oh, no, that one was just a prank. I, got, I saved him a little later. That was just to get his food. What do you mean, uh, saved me? You don't remember? No, I heard knocking all the time in the mines. I just chalked it up to being, again, breaking the earth. No, when you were about to dig over into a mine shaft. Just plummet to the ground. Yeah, no, I made sure rap tap tapping all over there just for you to stop. David, this is, uh, and I pun totally intended, groundbreaking. It sounds like a cryptid who you didn't have any animosity towards or relationship with saved your life. Or knowledge of. Or knowledge of. Well, I did have a knowledge of, but I honestly didn't believe it. I just wanted to try something new, and so I used it as an excuse. Besides the point, that would explain the Morse code knocking, you know. He was saying, stop, you'll fall. What's Morse code? It's kind of like tapping with letters. No, that's just how we talk. That's Knockerbocker. Oh, my God, David. So you actually speak Knockerbocker. That's kind of cool to find out, like... A new skill, maybe to, you know, you've been feeling sad lately. Maybe this is kind of a new thing that you can explore, speaking knockerbocker to people. Yeah, I always wonder where they came up with Morse code, but I guess that makes sense. They stole it from goblin men who lived under the earth. Not goblins. No, not goblins? They're totally different. We stay away from them. Mm -hmm. How are they different? They smell. Oh. And they're so easily tricked. And you're not easily tricked. Not at all. I do the tricking. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite type of prank? The best is to hide someone's tools right when they turn around. Oh, that must be infuriating. Or to switch out their little lights as they're walking down a hallway. That seems dangerous, actually. (laughs) Hee hee. Sometimes they don't come out. So you kind of have this vibe to me where it's like you're kind of like doing whatever makes you happy. You're kind of just living your life. Sometimes your pranks are like tee hee fun and sometimes they're like... There's been seven casualties in the mine today. That's a Tuesday. Always been scampering around, trying to eat, looking forward to the next prank. I love that. So you seem pretty fulfilled with your lifestyle. Um, And so on a typical day, you would just be like making pranks, doing things. Um, Mm, Today's a little bit slower than it was back when David and I met. mm -hmm. There's not nearly as many miners now. Um, So now I've had to improvise 
Now I have to go after school children, which are even more scared on their little field trips. And because we love putting children in mines, that must be kind of a fun experience. Oh, it's fantastic. How big are you in relation to the size of a child? Half size. Half the size of a child? So that must be so scary for a little kid to be like, look at this tiny little man in a miner's suit from the 1800s just stealing my tools. Because we put them to work in the mines, right? The children yearn for the mines. And it's not just the children that yearn for the mines. The influencers come in there too. Ooh, oh my gosh. I tried to be an influencer for like a week, but then I, I got too many followers too quickly and I was like, this isn't for me. Um, I can't keep up with my public. Yeah, the public are hard to, hard to work with. Yeah, it was just, it was, I, I, I can't talk about it. Um, let's move on. They're great to play with though. What is your favorite prank to play on an influencer? Always when they're holding their little selfie stick, you can just take it, block the camera right when they're trying to take a photo. <laughs> so you like, so you've been pr pranking influencers, pranking children, pranking minors. What is your opinion on humans? How do you feel about them? Oh, they're just so fun. Mm hmm. Yeah. Always like it when one of them comes on down. Yeah. Because they're fun to prank because they get scared. Mm hmm. Yeah. Big what, and dumb. What about David? What did you like pranking David? Oh, of course. He was very driven, and that, that's why I wanted to make sure he didn't die. Aw, David, he was looking out for you. Because if he died, you wouldn't have been able to prank him anymore. A dead exactly. human doesn't react to pranks the same way an alive human does. Exactly. And they don't bring you food. Yeah, I train my body to not eat a lot. So I have a couple bites of the, you know, putting down the corner's hand. And then kind of hiding them behind rocks. I didn't know what happened to them. Or what happened to the plates? So I assumed that they were getting eaten by other miners. Little did I know that they were, you know, these Tommy knockers. I always chalked up my, losing my tools to me just not having my full heart in the mining tunnels. It was always, always cryptids. And well, now here I am, cryptidless. My whole heart's into pranking. You know, we had a great cat and mouse. It sounds like you're just more into chasing than you are into catching cryptids. Caroline mentioned in her email that you've been feeling a little lost lately. Why would you tell him that? Because honesty is my first policy, David. My second policy is looking cute and serving looks. And it seems like your third policy is putting me in these positions where I am uncomfortable. What about me makes you uncomfortable? Well, it's not so much you. You were right. My life was about chasing the cryptids, less about catching them. And so now, you know, the cryptids are coming to me. So it takes the chase out of the game. And Caroline here, spilling my secrets, saying that I'm lost, just puts me in a headspace where I'm just a, you know, minor lost in those tunnels. Oh, believe me, I have been there before. When my mind closed down and there were no more miners coming through doing anything, I had no idea what to do with my life moping around but you know i figured out a way to persevere there's always someone around the mountains to get through something to keep you entertained now they got a whole little brewery named after me so i get to sneak in there and wink at drunk patrons see david there's always a way even when a part of your old life is maybe leaving that you can find new joy in perhaps hanging out with your assistant or talking to the cryptids who you used to swear vengeance against. So I have to figure out how I can hunt cryptids without hunting cryptids. And sometimes, like, things seem daunting. Like, when I left the influencer I was working for as her assistant to work for a non-influencer as an assistant, I was like, I don't know how this is going to go because... This man has no pizzazz. He has no stage presence. Um, but, you know, I've pivoted my career to being a different type of assistant. And sometimes it's just about seeing yourself in a new light, you know? Well, there's not much light down here besides the bulbs. Or a new darkness. You see yourself in a new darkness, David. You know, being in the dark minds by yourself, there is something peaceful about that. Nobody around you except for the knocks. Well, hey, if you ever want to come by, come by my mind. Bring a little food. Welcome anytime. Yeah, maybe like you can get out some of the energy you want to have towards hunting cryptids 
and just kind of scurry around a mine with pickaxe bill for a little while and kind of feel that rush that you used to feel about hunting a cryptid. And you can feel the rush you used to have about pranking David. And it's kind of like a nice way for you guys to get out your hobbies in a healthy and more impactful way. Like cryptids helping humans. Like sisters supporting sisters. So maybe what I got to do like what I did when I became a miner and got to broaden my reach more instead of just sticking in the U.S. Maybe I expand to Canada also or... Maybe even just the world. Well, I don't necessarily think making more cryptids your enemy is what we've been like trying to achieve over the past few weeks. But I'm always here to support you in exploring new avenues of life and revenue. And yeah, I think, David, you're missing the point, actually. I don't think uh, Pickaxe Bill and I want you to hunt more cryptids in different areas i think we want you guys to have like fun time in the mines together we'll workshop this Mm, well bill if i can call you bill call me tundra berry tundra berry yes sorry oopsies what like what have you been up to like lately and what do you think the future holds for you well, lately, right. I mean, my little town, Idaho Springs, is just booming. Tons of stuff is coming in. There's new people every day. All the more to prank. They're all coming through the mines, going through the breweries. I'll be just fine. And people like kind of getting lost in mines, too. So oh, yeah. It's always fun when people are lost in the mines. It's the best. I'll lead them the wrong way every time. <laughs> well, Tundra Berry... There's a pretty good chance I'm going to be one of those people that get lost in the mine, if the offer still stands. Ooh, sure does. Can't wait. But hey, I I really got to run. I got a wellness appointment at an underground hot spring with my buddy Crocus. Oh my gosh, will you tell Crocus I said hi, I miss him. Sure can. Ta-ta. Woo! No, but seriously, Caroline, I am severely out of practice of mining, so we will get lost if we go. So bring the GPS, Mm -hmm. and we should be okay. And I will bring a canary as well so that we will not be too deep under the earth. Um, So, David, do you feel a little bit better today? Do you feel a little bit more at peace? I know you were feeling super sad boy earlier. And um, I saw a little glint of hope in your eye when we were talking to Tundra Berry Pickaxe Bill. Caroline, remember you talked to me about saying the name properly? It's Tundra Berry Pinebow. But they called him Pickaxe Bill, kind of like a nickname that he didn't want. A knock name. Sure. Talking to a tundra berry made me really think, maybe I maybe I do got to get back into hunting, but do the world. There's some more cryptids that I haven't even tried to hunt. I don't think that's what we were trying to tell you. Um, I think we're trying to say that it's okay when your old hobbies leave and you have to come up with new hobbies. Yeah. You know, I got to learn different languages if I'm going to different countries. So that's a new hobby is I'll be doing, what's that? app with a little owl that yells at you i need to do that duolingo yeah i need to get dude lingo dude lingo yeah so because i think if i need to talk to the locals find the cryptids in other countries then i gotta be able to talk to them man i got i got so much stuff i gotta get ready for first off caroline you gotta fix the the holes in the walls then i gotta well you know i was looking at the spider web but now i gotta go to the store i gotta get some more ammo I have to get some bear traps, I have to get more rope, I need to get some barbed wire, I need to see a priest, I need to see a rabbi. Thanks for listening. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell your friends. Therapeutic as Folklore is produced by Caroline Schaefer and David Song. Special voice talent by Joe Williams.